Welcome back, Fly Tires. Thanks for tuning in again. Tying Tuesday, Brady here with you. Gonna tie Sands Epoxy Mysis. I was recently fishing the blue and this was a killer fly for me. Um, next best thing I would say to Pav's Jig Jiggy Mysis. That's a video that we have that you can check out. It's a cool pattern by our own Max Pavel, the Jiggy Mysis. Uh, but this is Sands Mysis. It's a sort of a longer, kind of been in the catalog, Umpqua catalog for a while. Uh, but a good one to have so we'll tie one up for you okay so there is our finished mysis go ahead and tie up a new one here tying on a very classic hook today the tmco 200r it's a great hook for nymphs you can tie dries on it it's a uh, standard wire gauge with a nice straight eye on it and then a long limerick style bend to it gives you a really buggy profile and it's great for patterns like this mysis that are kind of elongated and then the thread we're using today is actually some monofilament thread from danville we are gonna start this right behind the hook eye. We're gonna get a couple of wraps in behind the hook eye, and this is actually a tricky part of this fly, the hardest part of this fly for me. It's just getting it started. The monofilament thread is so slick, it can be tricky to get these locking wraps down. So we're gonna do front to back on this, locking wraps, keeping them touching if we can and you can always come through sort of push them together if you need to I'm gonna click out that tag in and then work my way rearward keeping nice touching wraps all the way back super smooth on this this will be the main body of the fly it's really kind of the tail aspect of the mysis shrimp and then I'm gonna go all the way back to where that bend starts, just past that hook point. And that's where we're gonna go ahead and get our next material ready. And like I said, if you wanna sort of tighten up your wraps a little bit, you can there. So the first material we're gonna tie in is some calf body hair. I'm not totally sure if this is the material that's used on the commercial pattern, but I think it gives a really great look and matches nicely to that fly that you might buy direct from Uncle Feather Merchants. You come by the shop, we do have these pre-tied in the bins if you're on the way up to the blue for the example. There we are. So we have the majority of it captured there. Just a few quick locking wraps on it. And then a couple on forward and then we can come through Clip it nice and short, about the length of that hook point there. And then we can also clean up in front of it slightly. We will cover this up here, but I do like to trim it down a bit. Calf hair is such a fine material. It can be a little tricky to work with. You may try polypost as well. Could be a good option for this. And then I've also seen it done with just Antron or the Sparkle Merger yarn, which we're gonna use here in a second. But I do really like that natural calf hair. So we'll go a couple of wraps forward right about to that hook point again. And then we can add in that Sparkle Merger yarn. Actually before the Sparkle Merger yarn, we're gonna add our antenna. So even though it's off the back of this fly, it's really the antenna of the bug. And we'll take some of our mallard flank. This is the dyed wood duck color. So you could use wood duck as well if you had some wood duck at home. I've also used tan on this fly. But we'll grab five or six of those off of the feather and manipulate them so that they're coming right off of the back of the shank. And I wanna be pretty much the full length of the shank back past my tie-in point here. So coming off a good ways off the back there, twice as long or so as the calf tail or calf hair. And then cut out the extra of that and give a quick cleaning up wrap 
or two over top. And then we can go into the Antron. So with the Antron, or this is actually Sparkle Merger Yarn, what I like to do is split a, a hank in half. So if it's on the Antron spool, you would split that in half. You can kind of see that they're sort of in bundles when you buy the complete Sparkle Merger Yarn here. So I've gone ahead and already split one in half. And then we're gonna tie this in right in the middle just to keep it easy to work with, or in the middle of the material that is, not in the material middle of the fly. I'm gonna walk just a couple of wraps forward on the fly. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just grab this material right in the center, just grabbing it for now. And then what I like to do, make sure I got at least three on there. You can just take that material and pull it straight underneath where you want it. And then from there, add a couple of quick locking wraps. We're gonna trim out the front half, close. And then the rear half will clip short. For now, I'm just gonna leave it where it is because it's kind of out of the way anyways. And then from there, we can go ahead and tie in our eyes. So the eyes for this are gonna be, it's gonna be a little bit of mono. You could use the mono thread that you're tying with there but I happen to have an old leader that I'm gonna use for this. It's probably an old 4X leader that's been cut back. And I'm just gonna clip a small amount off of the smaller end of the taper, and we'll tie that in. And I give myself a little bit of extra material to work with here, just to make things easy. You can always grab this with a pair of hackle pliers as well. But I'd make it just long enough that I can tie it in from front to back one time. And then we're gonna come from back to front on it and make sure that that's positioned where we want it. Sparkle Emerger yarn's starting to get in the way, so I'm gonna trim that out now. So we'll pull it all down and then I'm gonna clip it just past that hook point there. Gets that out of the way. About that unruly one. And then add some securing wraps. So I'll do like one behind and one or two in front of where those eyes are. Just like so. And then really from there, right now I'm gonna go ahead and whip finish it. Right in front of those eyes. So I'll help keep them from moving. So a few turn whip finish, pull it down nice and snug, and then we're gonna come back in and coat that body anyways. Um, but from here, I'm gonna clip and shorten my eyes. So those are, those are pretty long eyes. Um, so I'm gonna come in with my scissors, being careful, and clip them short. And the nice thing about this is if you get them uneven at this point, you can usually still sort of slide that material over and kind of get it centered a little bit better on the fly. So now our eyes are set. We're gonna color them with a little bit of Sharpie. I don't tend to use Sharpie much on my flies just cause it'll bleed. But in this case, I'm gonna be covering it with some UV finish anyways. Um, and the eyes on this fly are so subtle that I believe this to be a really good method of imitating that. So just kind of on the outside of that mono that we tied in, Draw some darkened pupils, I guess you could call them. Just like that, just some dark spots on there. Making some little buggy eyes. And then the fly is ready to be coated. So that's kind of the cool part of this fly or one of the cool aspects of this fly is the epoxy that goes onto it. You can see some of that mono still moving around on me. I'm still manipulating it because it's so slick. It's got a lot of memory. But we add in some solar res here. I'm using the thin because I like to move it around a lot. This is gonna help just finish this fly and also make sure that it's durable fish after fish. So I throw a glob right on top of the eyes usually. And then I will take my bodkin and push some of that rear towards the antenna, coating the top. 
and then sort of out towards each eye on either side. And then I might pull a little bit of it forward here. But right now I'm focused mostly on that section of the eyes there. I'm trying to get that all coated. And then we can hit it with our UV light and continue to sort of work on this, the way this fly looks overall. Really a pretty natural imitation when it comes down to it. If you were to find these shrimps swimming around, you'd see that they do look a lot like this fly. The fish love them. They gorge on them. And it tends to be a really high calorie diet for them, or at least seemingly because the fish that live in the tailwaters below reservoirs with these micey shrimp are always real healthy. So you can see now with my bodkin, I'm starting to sort of work forward. I want to keep a pretty smooth transition if I can to this fly. And we'll just coat it as we go. I really fish those tailwaters a lot in the winter time. Whenever there's a lot of snow, it's cold, most of our freestones are gonna freeze over. These tailwaters can be a great fishing option. And the mysis are always there. So there's not a hatch to worry about or focus in on necessarily. It really comes down to put it in the right place and more often than not, you're gonna see fish that are willing to slurp the mysis. Yeah, so just looking at this, I feel like I left my first tail a little bit long, so I'm just gonna come in and trim that down slightly. Make it nice and stubby there. And we have ourselves a nice finish. Finished sands epoxy mysis. Great little fly. Caught a lot of big fish on this fly. So if you are near a waterway that's got a reservoir with a tailwater with some mysis strip in there, the epoxy mysis just might be the right one for you. Again, don't forget about the uh, jiggy mysis, Pabs jiggy mysis. That's an excellent fly to have in those waterways as well. Um, maybe fish both of them and tell, tell us which one produces more for you when you go out and fish those types of waters. So thanks for, so much for watching. We appreciate it. Have fun tying uh, and let us know what you'd like to see in the future. Take care. Thank you.